Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Going to be giving you my predicted 11 for Manchester United's game against Leeds at Old Trafford. So I'm going to go with the 4-2-3-1 formation. In goal, David De Gea. Of course, David De Gea was in goal in Manchester United's 2-1 win against Crystal Palace. He did make a good save in that game. He is Man United's number one goalkeeper. As you all know, we're looking to extend his contract. Earlier on this season, it said De Gea will accept lower terms. Um, at the moment, De Gea earns £375,000 a week. He's out of contract at the end of the season, but there's an option of an additional year. De Gea has been a long-serving player at Man United. He's endured around 12 years at the club. He's been with us since the Ferguson era. He's won everything domestically at the football club. To be honest with you, there's a good chance De Gea will finish his career at Man United. Right back, I'm going to go with Diego Delo. He will come in for Aaron Wan-Bissaka because Delo has now recovered from that hamstring injury. Uh, Diego Delo is Manchester United's first choice right back. He's been our first choice right back for a while, like I mentioned. Bazaka's only been playing a lot of games in the last month or so because Delo has been unavailable. Uh, Delo, Manchester United got him from Porto. The two centre backs, Rafael Varane and Lisandro Martinez, they are our first choice centre halves. They complement each other very well in our back line. It was obviously Varane alongside Martinez in the game against Crystal Palace or Old Trafford. Left back, Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw played in the game against Palace at Old Trafford. He got the assist for Marcus Rashford's goal. Luke Shaw is still our first choice left back. You know, he is ahead of Malassia. Not so long ago, Luke Shaw had illness. Shaw's been at Manchester United for around, is it nine, ten years now, being a long serving player. He's injury prone, which is a concern. Towards the end of last year, Man United extended Luke Shaw's contract by one year. The two centre midfielders, I'm going to go with Fred and Marcel Sabitza. Obviously, Eriksson is unavailable. He's out with an ankle injury until April or early May. And McTominay has been out with a knock. Not too sure if he'll be able to play in this game. It depends if McTominay can prove his fitness. But it's likely to be Fred alongside Marcel Sabitzer. Uh, to be fair to Fred, he's done well in recent games. You know, Fred scored in the 2-0 win against Nottingham Forest in the Carabao Cup semi-final second leg. It was a tapping with his knee and Fred came off the bench and he scored a good flick from a corner in the FA Cup win over Reading. Uh, Fred scored in the 2-0 win against Tottenham earlier on in the season. You know, Fred's been at Manchester United since like 2018. Manchester United got him from Shakhtar Donetsk in a deal worth like £50 million. Towards the end of last year, Man United extended Fred's contract by one year. But Fred is still one of Man United's first choice centre midfielders despite the arrivals of Casemiro and Christian Eriksen.
and Marcel Sabitzer, I am expecting him to make his Manchester United debut. Full debut, that is. Sabitzer came on in the win against Crystal Palace. You know, we've got Sabitzer on loan until the end of the season. There's no option or obligation to buy. Like I said, the reason we got Sabitz on loan was because of Christine Eriksson's injury blow. But yeah, I think now with the two centre midfielders, as you all know, Casemiro's not available for this game. Casemiro's banned for three games. Casemiro obviously got sent off in the game against Crystal Palace at Old Trafford. He got sent off for grabbing Will Hughes by the throat. The attacking midfielder, I will go with Bruno Fernandes. Uh, Bruno Fernandes is in form at the moment. You know, Fernandes scored an early penalty in the win against Crystal Palace at Old Trafford. He scored in the reverse fixture against Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. But he does look a far superior player, Fernandes, without Ronaldo in the team. Revert back to Ronaldo was at United. We couldn't get the best out of Bruno Fernandes. On the left wing, I'm going to go with Marcus Rashford. Rashford scored against Crystal Palace at Old Trafford. It was a tapping from Luke Shaw's cross. You know, it was Rashford's 19th goal in all competitions this season. He's on fire. You know, not so long ago, Marcus Rashford got named Premier League Player of the Month for January. On the right wing, I'm going to go for Anthony. Obviously, Anthony was on the right wing against Palace at Old Trafford. Anthony's been playing really well recently, you know. He scored some goals for United in certain games. He's had good chances. Um, Jaden Sancho is an option on that right-hand side because he's now back, but don't see him starting this game. You know, Elanga's an option, but he's not first choice. Palestri would be an option as well. <coughs> but no, he won't start. Ganacho would be an option. But no, I don't think he'll start either. For, so yeah, Anthony on the right wing. And up top, Wout Weghorst. Um, obviously, Martial has recently picked up another injury. Man United have got Weghorst on loan until the end of... Of the season. Weghorst played in the game against Crystal Palace at Old Trafford. He had a good chance. Produced a good save from the Palace keeper. Weghorst scored his first goal for Man United. In the first leg against Nottingham Forest. At the City ground. So that's how I think Man United will line up. Against Leeds on Wednesday. You know, if Manchester United win this game against Leeds on Wednesday, that will be 14 straight home wins. And we'll go five points behind Arsenal. Manchester United are third at the moment. But we are coming into this game on the back of a 2-1 win against Crystal Palace. Obviously, Ten Hag said a few things after the game. He hit out at inconsistent refereeing and he said Crystal Palace players should have been sent off. So there are a few of the things he mentioned. As you all know, it got announced earlier on today 
that Leeds United sat Jesse Marsh after less than a year in charge. You know, they sacked him because of that defeat to Nottingham Forest yesterday. And Leeds have been in terrible form anyway. Jesse Marsh, you know, was under contract with Leeds until 2025. You know, he did get appointed in as the Leeds manager back in February last year. He actually replaced Bielsa. You know, before Jesse Marsh, you know, managed the likes of RB Leipzig. He was also the assistant coach at RB Leipzig. He managed Salzburg once and before managed New York Red Bulls and Montreal. But yeah, um, I presume a lot of Leeds fans are delighted with the news that, you know, they've decided to sack Jesse Marsh. You know, Leeds sat Marcelo Bielsa last season. Uh, Leeds, what, finished 17th last season, didn't they? But Bielsa was better than Jesse Marsh. You know, don't forget Bielsa got Leeds a ninth place, finishing his first season in the Premier League as manager. And he won the championship with Leeds. And it was Leeds' first trophy in 28 years. But, you know, Leeds have endured a terrible season, 17th in the Premier League, above relegation on just goal difference. They've only won four league games this season. Uh, they've only won one of the last 10 league games. That justifies how bad they've been. Uh, players Leeds have got. They've got the likes of Wilfred Anonto. Leeds got him from FC Zurich. Somerville, he's a young player. He's in the Leeds first team now before he was in the under-23s. Sam Greenwood's a young player. Uh, Rodrigo, he's a big miss for Leeds. He's going to miss both games against Man United. He's a key player for Leeds. Leeds got him from Valencia. Patrick Bamford, very good. Leeds got him from Middlesbrough. He's a goal scorer. Leeds fans have got reservations about Bamford though because he's injury prone. Diego Monteiro, Leeds signed him not so long ago uh, from Servet, but he's an academy player. They got Weston McKenney on loan from Juventus. Leeds do have the option to buy Weston McKenney for thirty million at the end of the loan. He made his Leeds debut against Nottingham Forest. Uh, Rutter has made an impact. Maxi Milan Warber. Uh, Louis Sinister is good. Brendan Aronson, Mark Rocker, Leeds got him from Bayern Munich. Tyler Adams, Jack Harrison, Liam Cooper, don't rate him. He's just come back from injury. Pascal Stroik. Uh, Robin Koch, um, he played no part in Leeds' game against Forest because he was suspended. Robin Koch is a defender. Adam Forshaw's out of injury. Uh, Stuart Dallas, he's out of injury and he's a key player for Leeds. You know, they've got Luke Kaling, who's a decent centre back. Um, the goalkeepers Leeds United have got, they've got Mayerley. Number one keeper, Joe Robles and Christopher Klassen. So there are a lot of the players that Leeds do have. 
But um, they've spent around 80 million leads on the players they've recently signed. I think they spent some money last summer as well. Um, obviously, they've generated money because obviously they got around 80 million when they sold Rafinha and Calvin Phillips. You know, Calvin Phillips went to City from Leeds. He's not first choice at City. Rafinha went to Barcelona from Leeds. Um, Leeds just recently loaned Joe Geldau, Geldar out to Sunderland. He's a good young player. Leeds initially got him from Wigan. They loaned Diego Laurenti out to Roma. Uh, last year they let Matthias Klitsch go. He had to go because obviously he was out of favour at Leeds. Quite a few years ago Leeds let Alioski go as well. And I think that was a bad mistake because I thought Alioski was good at Leeds. He did play well. Uh, alongside Luke Ayrlin. So there you go. Don't forget, Leeds got relegated back in 2004. So they was out of the top flight for 16 years. They came back up to the top flight in 2020. The last time Leeds beat Manchester United was in the FA Cup third round back in January 2020. It was 1-0. Jermaine Betford scored. Manchester United beat Leeds at Old Trafford last season 5-1. Uh, that was the opening day of last season. And Man United won at Ellen Road last season 4-2. So there you go. Um, on my last video, I give you an update on some more transfer news. Um, reports from Italy suggest Manchester United are willing to pay £107 million for Victor Schumann from Napoli. Um, Harry Kane urged against the move. His future's still undecided, is Kane's. We'll go in for Harry Kane in the summer. You know, in the summer as well, Ten Hag will focus on the outgoings as well as the incomings. You know, Ten Hag is preparing a summer clear out. I'm hearing that around six players could be leaving in the summer. Um, Ten Hag has endured two transfer windows as Man United manager. You know, in January, he got three players in on loan. He got Marcel Sabitzer. Jack Butland and Weghorst did make a permanent signing in January last summer. Tenar brought the likes of Terrell Molassi in, Christine Eriksen, Martinez, Casemiro, Anthony and Dubravka. Tenar has spent over £200 million as Manchester United manager so far. So anyway guys, that's everything to update with. Drop your comments, likes, on the channel if you do consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very soon.